Hola, como estas? Yo, 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 guys, welcome back in today. Today we're going to be talking about Afro-Panamanians. Afro-Panamanians are Panamanians of African descent in the country of Panama. It is believed that they encompass 18% of the population, with close to 50% of the population in total having some African blood. Afro-Panamanians can be broke up into two categories, Afro-Colonial and afro antillian Afro-colonial Panamanians were brought during the colonial period. The afro antillian Panamanians were immigrants from Jamaica, Barbados, and Trinidad to build the Panama Canal. The first Africans during the time period would arrive in 1513. The Panama Canal was and is still very important. This is due to it being the shortest route from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean. Trade was very important for the Spanish and Spanish farmers. Initially, other native peoples were used as slaves, but the population was affected heavily by European diseases and overworking. Bartolomé de las Casas, a European Spanish farm owner, would advocate for getting slaves from Africa. In 1517, the first wave of African slaves were on the way to Panama. At the beginning of their duties, they would maintain ships and the ports. Soon after, they would be used by the Spanish to transport goods over thousands of miles of grueling terrain. Other natives would attack caravans and in some cases killed Africans and Europeans in the array of battle. This could also be a good thing. In some occasions when the natives attacked the caravans, slaves would escape into nature. There were also times where the slaves would escape on their own devices as well. When escaping, they would make maroon communities. These free maroon communities would then come back and attack caravans and free more slaves. By the 1550s, this would be very, very disruptive to the Spanish Europeans. A agreement would be met to stop looking for maroons in the area and the Maroons went on to create many towns. Slavery would still carry on though, and in Panama City, slaves would work in the production of dyes, textiles, domestic house workers, carpenters, blacksmiths, and cobblers. Once gold was found not many years after, slaves were also used for mining gold as well. With all these factors, the demand and dependency for slaves increased. Some enslaved peoples could be emancipated by their masters or by their freedom. Some free men actually joined the lowest levels of government. Panama was part of Colombia at the time, and in the early 1800s, they would sue Colombia for independence. This would become law in 1821 and ended slavery. This event still did not make it much easier for Afro-Panamanians, Race wars would break out in the 1830s. Afro-Panamanian militant leaders did not feel progression in the new country was moving fast enough. In 1838, the white elite of the country would step in to stop the race riots. In 1838, the white elite of the country would step in to stop the race riots. This would see black Panamanians stay in the lower class, while whites and mulattoes enjoyed high and middle class. The Congo dance would start to get even more prevalent in Afro-Panamanian coastal communities. This dance expresses the anger, joy, pain, and strength of Afro-Panamanian spirit. The story told from the dance conveys acting out a fight with the devil who is said to be loose during Carnival. In essence, the dance recalls the rebellion of black slaves fighting against the Spanish European oppressors. This is a mix of African culture and Catholic religion. Like a lot of African enslaved people in the Americas and the Caribbeans, African traditions were brought over and a lot of times fused with other cultures. In 1903, the construction of the Panama Canal began. 50,000 workers were imported from Barbados, Trinidad, and Jamaica. This second wave would bring more discrimination to the country's already tense atmosphere. 
Many supervisors over the Panama Canal came from the southern part of the United States and enforced certain types of segregation. Mestizos would also be put into the group as well. And discrimination some mestizos had against blacks outside of the canal construction would not be the same on the canal. Whites saw them all the same, mixed or not. Afro-Panamanians also felt resentment that new waves of Caribbean Africans were getting work over them. In 1914, the Panama Canal was completed and 20,000 Caribbeans remained in the country. Overall, the country had a resentment for the new population. In 1926, Panama passed a law to decrease immigration from the West Indies. Soon after, they would ban all non-Spanish-speaking Blacks from entering the country. Many integrated into each's community, and in the 1960s, Afro-Panamanians would begin to organize politically. Over time, institutions started to take more note of Afro-Panamanians, though some Afro-Panamanians feel the country still has further way to go. So you guys, today we learned a little bit about Afro-Panamanians. Please like, subscribe to the channel down there, and turn on the bell notification so you get all my videos. And also check out my new African online NFT art called Diaspora. The link is down in the description. Add me on all social medias, which is Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, Facebook, TikTok. Each one teach one. Always love each other. Always learn from each other. And yo guys, until next time, peace, one love.